Nakormik, thank you very much. Uh, um, President Grimson, uh, our ho Greenland hosts, uh, fellow panelists, distinguished guests, pour moi c'est un grand plaisir d'être ici aujourd'hui comme représentant du gouvernement du Québec. Notre Premier ministre, Monsieur Cuillard, m'a désigné de représenter le Québec à ce forum. There's my gentle reminder that there's also a French perspective on uh, the development of the North, Quebec, of course, being the French-speaking part of Canada, so I'm very proud to be here. Like many other people have mentioned, this is my first trip to Greenland, and uh, a lot of my friends back in Montreal said, wow, going to Greenland, I'd never thought about that, but that's really cool. That's something that's really exciting, and I think many of the other speakers have talked about it today, there is a growing interest in the Arctic. There's a growing interest in the North. I'm very lucky because as Quebec Minister for Native Affairs, I've been able to explore Northern Quebec a great deal. But for me to start thinking about Iceland, with due respect, President, it's something I haven't thought about all that much in my life. But this conference, I think, is an occasion for all of us to start thinking about our neighbors. You talked about a neighborhood in, in the North, President Grimson, and I like that image very much. And uh, we have examples of it. Uh, when I was in Kujuak in Quebec a couple of weeks ago, people are still talking about the Arctic Winter Games that were hosted here in Nuuk and March and apparently were a great success. But I think these are examples that, yes, there's economic development, and I'll get to that in a moment, but there are other bonds that we can continue to develop as well that bring people together. And I think it's, it's very exciting. And uh, to be here with uh, a couple of my colleagues, uh, Robert Sauvé, who's the president of our Northern Development Corporation, La Société de Plan Nord, Christos Siros, a very good friend of mine who's our representative in London, but also to have with us uh, representatives of Nunavik. I see two of my friends from the Makiavik Corporation, Adami uh, Delil Alaku and Andy Morehouse. Uh, Joey Lance is here. Pita Atami is here from Air Inuit. We have a representative from the Regional Health Board from Nunavik as well. So I think we're all here and we have all sorts of experiences to share and to learn about because there are huge challenges facing all of us. And I think to have a forum where we can talk about those ideas together, where we can look at things like, I drew up a quick list uh, just thinking about it, but uh, one of them of course is climate change. And certainly within a Quebec context, the effects of climate change are felt most dramatically in northern Quebec. So I think it is one example where climate change is something that we have to think about what can we do. There was the great conference in Paris before Christmas that gives challenges to all of our societies on how to come to grips with uh, climate change because it's our northern residents that are first and foremost involved. There are whole questions of that balance that we've talked about between economic development, resource development, and protection of the environment. There are no easy answers to those questions. You've probably grappled with it in your jurisdictions. We grapple with it in our jurisdiction as well. So what can we learn from other? What kind of practices can we learn from a conference such as this one today? We've talked about social development. Uh, as I say, a, re a representative from our regional health board in Nunavik is here, exchanging best practices with people that he's going to meet. But we all have challenges about what's the best way to provide health care, what's the best way to provide education in, in northern contexts, respectful of native languages, native traditions. I think this is all part of the challenge that we're facing. I had a very interesting meeting this morning with uh, Knud Christensen, who's responsible for housing here in Greenland. And we have a huge challenge in northern Quebec. Well, how do we deliver housing? We have a very, very young population in northern Quebec. We already have a huge housing shortage, but I'm very fe fearful of what the housing situation will look like in 2030. If we're not keeping up now, and if half of the population or more is under 25, what will housing look like in our 14 northern villages in 2030 is something I think that we can learn from each other. What experiences have worked? What approaches have worked? What hasn't worked? Because I think there's always a place in a conference like this to say, Ah, we tried that and that didn't work out very well. So I think there is something we can learn from that kind of experience as well. All of the infrastructure challenges, we've talked about aviation, we've talked about shipping, we've talked about airports, we've talked about ports. There's all sorts of development as well that we can share practices and learn from something today. And so I think maybe the first point I'd like to make is that we all have a great deal to learn from each other today. And I'm looking forward to my three days here in Nuuk to listen to your experiences, exchange practices on what we can do in terms of a, a respectful and a sustainable northern development in our various countries and our various jurisdictions. Um, 
In Quebec, what I'd like to talk to you about very briefly is our approach to this, which was started in 2010 by the then Premier Jean Charest, who came up with a Plan Nord, a northern plan, which was an, an idea to, to do something to our representative from the ICC, uh, Okalik, talked about it before, as opposed to just having a vision to the next election or to the next six months, to really sit down around a table and say, what do we want northern Quebec to look like in the year 2035? And to try to make it as global a vision as possible, so it's not just a question of mining, or it's not just a question of other economic development, or just education, what can we do together comprehensively to imagine what northern Quebec will look like in the year 2035? So it was launched in 2010, with a sort of a second edition, governments change, as we all, the politicians in the room know that governments change every once in a while. So a new government in 2014 under Philippe Couillard uh, came up with a second version or a second edition, but the idea is to try to get government, the leaders from the various First Nations and Inuit communities, the private sector, uh, non-governmental organizations, environmentalists, all around a big table and say, what will Quebec look like or what will Northern Quebec look like in 2035? So it's a government proposal with government investments, private sector investments. And what was very interesting was the Northern leaders, both Inuit and Cree, ran with this idea. So the Cree presented a Cree vision of the Plan Nord in about 2012. And the Inuit did a very, very significant consultation called Parnasumatik, which is be prepared, get ready, something like that. I don't know, you'll help me with the translation. But they went around to all 14 communities across northern Quebec, north of the 55th parallel. So if you're in Greenland, that's fairly southern, I know, but it's pretty north for Quebec, north of the 55th parallel. Went to all the communities and came up with an Inuit vision of what they would like Nunavik to look like in the year 2035. So it was very ambitious, very long, many meetings and communities to come up with their vision. And some of the very strong points that were made in that uh, a vision included the whole question of language and culture. I think if there was one message that came out very clearly was the, the threat to an Inuit identity, if you will, and how important it is in terms of education, in terms of the decisions we make for the future to make sure that that Inuit language, tradition, traditional activities and cultures are part of our forward thinking. So that was a point that came out from that consultation very clearly. The environment as well, as I mentioned, uh, northern Quebec is where the challenges of climate change, the challenges of building housing and other infrastructure in a, a pretty hostile climate. Uh, there's still lots of snow in Kujuak when we were there uh, yesterday, so um, it, it's uh, quite a challenge. It's quite a challenge of bringing everything up from the south. Uh, there's a very short shipping season and most uh, non-perishable goods and most uh, uh, building materials and everything else have to come from the south. So that's a challenge for all of us. How can we do that? How can we do that without uh, creating a cost of living that's beyond, uh, it's already very expensive to live in Kujuak and in the other northern villages, so we're working to try to find ways to keep the cost of living under control for the people who live there. And then, as I say, this enormous preoccupation with the youth of the communities. Um, Quebec, like many Western democracies, have an aging population. I'm a baby boomer, and most of the people who live in Quebec are baby boomers like me who are in their early 60s. So we're more worried about seniors' residences, but up in northern Quebec, it's elementary schools, it's daycare centers, what can we do to prepare tomorrow? So it's a very different uh, demographic pyramid that we're dealing with in northern Quebec. So that's something that's very exciting as well. So with Premier Cuillard, we've said all along that all northern development has to be done for and with the people of the north, the Cree, the Naskapi, the Innu, and the Inuit, our three First Nations and our Inuit uh, nation, very important to that future. I heard my bell. As you can see, I love to talk about this because uh, northern Quebec, my first trip to there was 1991, so it gives me a nice perspective. I've seen Kujuak in particular evolve over the last 25 years, but I promised people back at the home office, my last 30 seconds will be a pitch, the fourth forum in this series will be held in Quebec City, December 11, 12, and 13. The Christmas trees will all be decorated. There'll be lights everywhere. I'd like to be able to promise you snow, but climate change is even affecting Quebec City, so I can't guarantee you snow on the 13th of December. 
but one of the, there will be an important conference like this forum here. We'll be talking about social and economic development. We'll be talking about climate change. I think Prince Albert of Monaco is coming to do an important session. So mark that down in your calendars, but I would really enjoy if as many of you as possible can come and join us in Quebec City, get ready for Christmas under the bright lights on the St. Lawrence River. And sir, that, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.